Welcome. In this video, I'm going to do a benchmark of running Final Cut Pro on my Mac Mini M1 against my early 2015 MacBook Pro. So I'm going to take a project. I found what I think is probably one of my larger projects, and I'm going to render it out on the two machines and see how long it takes. So this isn't a standard benchmark to compare against other benchmarks. I'm just curious how much this upgrade is helping me as far as rendering things faster. So my Mac Mini M1 has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive. My early 2015 MacBook Pro has a Core i5 Intel processor, eight gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. And I did that SSD upgrade myself. So I have all my software turned off here. I'm going to go up to Time Machine and say I skip this back up. I have the project on my desktop here. I'm going to open it up in Final Cut. And I think this was around 30 gigabytes. Let me look. Yeah, it's 33 gigabytes. So I've copied this onto the desktop of my two computers. And right now I'm on the Mac Mini M1. I don't know if I said that. So I'm going to go into my preferences here and go on playback. And I'm going to turn off background render. Next, I'm going to go to File and go to Delete Generated Library Files. I'll select Render Files All, and I'll click these two. I don't think I have Optimized Media or Proxy Media, but I'll hit OK. So now I'm ready to start my render. So I'll select my project. I'll click on the Share icon in the upper right. I'll go to YouTube and Facebook. I'll click on Settings, make sure I have 1080p selected, better quality. I'll hit Next. So I have a Final Cut Pro cache folder I use. I'm going to save it in there because it doesn't get backed up. So I'll hit Save, and that'll start the clock. Okay, that completed. I'll do the same procedure on the 2015 MacBook Pro. Okay, so I've imported the screen capture of both of those renders into Final Cut Pro. This first one here is the Mac Mini M1. The second one is the early 2015 MacBook Pro. So if you look in the middle of the screen here, you can see 18. That's the length of the first clip. That's how long it took to render on the Mac Mini M1. The second clip down here is the screen capture from the early 2015 MacBook Pro. And if you look in the middle of the screen, we're looking at the yellow number here. It's two hours and three minutes. So it took around 6.8 times longer to render on the early 2015 MacBook Pro than it did the Mac Mini M1. So this is probably one of my longer videos. Most of my videos are shorter, so it wouldn't have taken two hours on the old computer, but it also is probably an example of the worst case of what I do, so the longest it might take in the future is about 20 minutes. Most of my videos render a lot faster than that. Let me pull that video up real quick. I didn't really go over what was in this video. So this was a bunch of video clips from a GoPro. You can see the resolution here was 2704 by 1520 at 60 FPS. So I had a bunch of different clips. They were just added together and I have some titles on it. So I'm not doing any color grading. I'm not doing anything complicated here. I think I have some transitions there. So it's a pretty basic video. And the export I was doing was to 1080p. Here's the output video. We have 1920 by 1080. The size was two gigabytes. So my main reason for doing this video is I was curious if this new computer was worth it to me, and that's quite a bit of speed up. Another advantage of the Mac Mini M1 is that while it's outputting in Final Cut Pro, I can go into other software. I use Affinity Designer a lot and Affinity Photo and work on my thumbnail, or I can check email or surf the web. Since it has eight cores in there, there's more computing power so I can do more things at once. The 2015 MacBook Pro, is a dual core machine, but I think it supports hyper-threading. I may be wrong on that. But while it was exporting in Final Cut Pro, I could do other things, but it would slow down the export. I don't think that's going to be as big of an issue with this Mac Mini. It also has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and my MacBook Pro only had eight gigabytes of RAM, and that can make a difference too if you're running more than one piece of software. So 6.8 times faster in a real-world test to me, that seems like a pretty good win to me. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel. I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.